Welcome back YouTube. I've got an exciting video for you today as the Godox 8600 Pro, my test version of it just hit my doorstep. So we're gonna go over it with you guys. So the original Godox 8600 turned a lot of heads back in 2016 as it really brought high powered portability to a new low in pricing. It brought TTL, high speed sync, internal receiving, 600 watt seconds of power, all for around $700. Better yet, it had functionality with a huge list of X-series speed lights and mono lights and studio lights. So your options for pairing this with other lights made for a really robust system. So the 8600 Pro is designed to be a slight step up from the original 8600 and there's a few ways that it's different. First off, the front sports an all new head design and bulb while still keeping the Bowens modifier mount. The bulb is now the horseshoe shape with a frosted front element. The bulb comes out way further from the Bowens mount on the 8600 to ensure the entire bulb makes it into the modifier. There's a new reflector design that is much more flush with the body style. It also includes a cap for the top so you don't have to swap the reflector out for the bulb protector when storing it. With this new bulb and head design, it means there will be no compatibility with prior accessories like the H600B and H12 1200B remote heads. There's also an optional handle that you can attach to the back. The LED light has been dramatically increased from 10 watts to 38 watts. It's far more useful as a modeling lamp even in larger modifiers. The modeling lamp can now be controlled by any percentage from 1 to 100%. You can set it to remain on constantly or to dim with each flash during recycle. You can also have the modeling lamp match the flash output. There is a much stronger fan to kick the heat out from the brighter LED, so be prepared for the fan sound if you plan on leaving the modeling lamp running. Gone is the loud notch plastic stand mount that was on the previous 8600. It's been updated to a silent all metal design that you would find on the Godox QT600 version 2. This is a big improvement as the handle doesn't bump into the side of the flash body anymore. There is still an umbrella holder and with the new reflector there is no need to put umbrellas through the reflector. The umbrella holder has been switched to a screwless style designed to let umbrellas slide out if there is significant wind which in theory prevents the light from toppling over outdoors. The menu is pretty familiar with all the same controls, dials, and display style. The group letter is now represented much larger to allow you to see it from a greater distance. It has the same group, wireless, mode, menu, HSS, modeling lamp, and test button. They have added a sound button for disabling the beep without entering the menu. There's one button missing from the side, and that is the on or off button. It's been moved to the bottom and made much larger. This is great for accessing the power while it's up on a stand. The top feature is the same USB port for triggering with the old Godox FT16 system as well as the same sync jack. The Pro model now has a USB Type-C port for updating firmware. The battery on the Pro has a similar size to the last 8600 but different connectors and reduced capacity. This means that the 8600 Pro will fire 370 full power flashes instead of 500. This is a byproduct of the increased voltage which allows the 8600 Pro to recycle its full power in just under one second. Across the entire power range, the Pro now recycles twice as fast as the previous model. Another massive improvement is the new stable color mode. This ensures that no matter the power output, that the light will stay within 75 degrees Kelvin of 5600. This is by far the biggest improvement of the light. While I don't have access to the Profoto B1X in Broncolor 400L, there is a video out, I've got it linked in the description that you can check out, where they compare the color and power output of the 8600 Pro to the B1X in the Broncolor 400L. And it blew me away that out of the three, the 8600 Pro was the best in color accuracy. So that video shows their entire 30 minute test, but they did sum it up in this one table and it's really easy to follow. You can tell from the graph that the total color drift that the 8600 Pro experienced over its entire power range was about 170 Kelvin. Now while I can't do that test because I don't have a brown color laying around or the Pro Photo, I hope to do a Pro Photo comparison down the road like I did previously with the 8600. All I can say is it's really well improved over the previous 8600, which experienced up to a 400 Kelvin shift over its entire power range. Like this video if you want Broncolor to send me a Cirrus 400 so that we can do this comparison. Also, I like drones, I like motorcycles. The flash durations of the 8600 Pro are pretty much identical to the previous 8600. However, they do go down when you enter the stable color mode. So here's a list of all the flash durations at full stop increments here. The 8600 Pro still operates on the same 2.4 gigahertz radio equipment that the entire X-Series is built on, which means it will still receive a signal from the X1, X-Pro, X-T32, or any X-Series speed lights. Built in is the TTL and HSS protocols for Nikon, Canon, Sony, Fuji, Olympus, Panasonic. So as long as you have the proper transmitter to control it, it's gonna receive the signal from any of 
of those and operate with full compatibility. There is no manual only version of the 8600 Pro. So if you buy it, you're gonna be getting TTL and the price at the time of release is gonna be $899. In the United States, this is gonna be exclusively sold by B&H and Adorama. So if you're planning on getting one of these, you're gonna be buying from one of those two places, not Amazon. So. This brings us to power. Typically I would have featured this earlier, but unfortunately I ran into an issue. The 8600 Pro is 600 watt seconds, just like the previous version. And even in their specs with the new head design and reflector, it's listed as having the exact same guide number. There was a little bit of hope that with the updated design that it would actually be more powerful than the 8600 Pro because it'd be more efficient at delivering that light inside of a modifier. Unfortunately, in my meter tests, I actually got a slightly lower power output out of the 8600 Pro compared to the original 8600. So I talked to Godox and I said, hey, these are the results I'm getting. This shouldn't be happening, right? And they said, definitely not. You should be receiving the exact same power output rating when you're using the standard reflectors. So they ensured me that that should not be the case and it's likely that there is an issue with my tester model. Again, these aren't out yet. This is a beta model that I've got for testing and for showing you guys. It's worth noting that in the video that I shared earlier that came out of China showing the power and color ratings, in that video it seemed that their 8600 Pro was operating at the full power and beating out the Profoto B1X in peak power. I'm hopeful that this is just an issue with mine. I don't know exactly what's happening yet on that front, but I will We'll update you guys as soon as I do know. So the ultimate question, should you upgrade? Well, let's give Godox the benefit of the doubt and assume that my power issue is anecdotal and that once this is released, it's gonna have the identical power as the previous 8600. Believe me, if it's not resolved, I'll be telling you guys. The changes to the body are pretty minor, although the stand mount and the changed power button and the added sound beep button and the new head design, they're all welcome improvements. The two major improvements are the 38 watt LED bulb which makes it far more useful as a modeling light. You can definitely use this thing indoors with pretty much any modifier whether it's a reverse modifier, a soft box, this modeling light is definitely going to light everything up. Outdoors you're still going to probably need to use a direct modifier pretty close to your subject if you want to use it as a modeling lamp. The stable color mode just catapults this light into a new class of comparisons. I mean it's beating out Profoto B1s and Broncolor Cirrus 400s at color accuracy. That seems to be the biggest reason that somebody would invest in Profoto or Broncolor is because of that color accuracy. And so for a light to do better at one third of the price is just insane. So if your work is color critical, if you're doing anything where you don't want to invest extra time in editing because of color inaccuracies with the light, then this is gonna be a really great upgrade for you. Beyond that, I think that the original 8600 is still going to satisfy most photographers' needs and nobody should feel pressured to upgrade thinking that their original 8600 is somehow irrelevant or out of date now. So if you need the modeling light or you need the color stable mode, jump up to the 8600 Pro. Otherwise, keep on the lookout for sale prices on the original 8600. I really like what this light represents from Godox because it just shows that they're listening to all the minor things that we have issues with and things like the color stable mode just shows that they're really trying to push what they can give us for a low price. With the 8600 versus the Profoto B1, it was kind of this value versus precision argument on which one would be better for you. And now that they've closed the gap with the color accuracy, just makes the Godox seem like a more desirable option. I hope you enjoyed this look at the 8600 Pro. Leave a like if you did. I'm going to be addressing the power issues, whatever the result of that is in the future. I'm sorry that I couldn't deliver that today, but I didn't want to lie to you and say it was just as powerful and more powerful. So thumbs up for honesty. Join my photography gear chat group on Facebook. If you want to chat with me and thousands of other photographers, that link's in the description below. And until next time, keep on shooting YouTube.